Aslan's Historical Dictionary of the Americas. Today's word, Aztec. The word Aztec is one of the most iconic demonyms from the pre-Columbian Americas, yet it's a word that's misused so often that most people really don't have a clear notion of whom the Aztecs really were. So today we are going to clear up some of those incorrect uses of the word Aztec, while we explore the meaning, origin and uses that history has given to the name of this famous Mesoamerican nation. The origin First of all, what does the name Aztec means? The name comes from the Nahuatl word Azteca, which translates as people from Aztlan, which is the name of the legendary ancestral homeland of said people. Now, the name Aztlan itself is center of its own controversy, as the meaning of the name has been debated for centuries. The most commonly accepted meaning of the name translates it as place of herons or place of egrets, presenting Aztlan as a deformation of Aztatlan, which will be the correct way to write said expression in Nahuatl. Nevertheless, this proposal has been disputed across history, and other possible interpretations of the name Aztlan have been suggested, including place of whiteness, place of reeds, place between ant nests, and place of the Squawitl, an unidentified type of tree mentioned by colonial Chalca historian Chimalpain. So, going by the available evidence, Aztec or Azteca could mean anything from people from the place of egrets to people from the place between ant nests. That's why, despite the best efforts of numerous experts over the centuries, the exact meaning of the name Aztec remains pretty much a mystery even today. Aztec and Mexica The term Aztec wasn't really the way in which the people of this nation called themselves. For the Aztecs, the proper name for calling their countrymen was Mexica. Now, the name Mexica itself has a pretty mysterious origin and has been subject of many misconceptions in recent years. A common myth says that the name of the modern-day country of Mexico comes from Mexica, but this is as correct as saying that the name of Canada comes from the word Canadian. In reality, both Mexica and Mexico share the same etymological root, which is the Nahua word Mexico, with Mexica roughly translated as those who live in Mexico. Now, the etymological origin of the name Mexico is still subject of debate among linguists and historians, as there have been many hypotheses about the origin and meaning of this name. Scholars like Fernando de Alba Ixtlizóchitl, Manuel Orozco Iberra and Francisco Javier Clavijero have studied the etymology of the name Mexico for centuries, and all kinds of proposals have been made about the etymological root of said name. From claims of Mexico and by extension Mexico being a cognate of the word Messiah, to claims linking it to Otomi and Nahua words for spiders, watercress, century plants, and turpentine. To this day, there is no consensus on the etymology of Mexico, although the most accepted translation is place in the navel of the moon, interpretation that has been championed by scholars like Alfonso Caso and Gutierrez Tibón. Nevertheless, the etymology and history of the word Mexico or Mexico is so long and complex that it deserves its own entry on this dictionary. Now, that being said, Mexica and Aztec have a pretty interesting historical relationship, as they both refer to the same ethnic group, but on different points of history. According to the codices Boturini and Aubin, before the founding of the cities of Tenochtitlan and Tlatelolco, the Aztecs called themselves Azteca, in honor of their legendary ancestral homeland. But when they arrived into the island of Mexico, which was located within the ancient Lake Texcoco, they changed their name to Mexica in honor of the new homeland. Said change, according to the Codex Aubin, was a mandate of the supreme patron deity of the Aztecs, the war god Huitzilopochtli. Then, if the Aztecs called themselves Mexica, 
Why is the name Aztec the most commonly used to refer to this Mesoamerican nation? Well, the answer to that question may lie in the papers of Prussian scholar and explorer Alexander von Humboldt, who in his famous work Views of the Cordilleras and Monuments of the Indigenous Peoples of the Americas, published in 1810, made heavy use of the word Aztec to describe the Mexica as he chose to honor their roots in the legendary Aztlán. Some years later, in 1843, American historian William H. Prescott, probably wanting to avoid confusion between the words Mexica and Mexican, chose to call the builders of Tenochtitlan Aztecs in his famous work History of the Conquest of Mexico. Prescott did this following the example of Humboldt, as did other contemporary authors like La Renaudier and Chevalier, thus helping to establish Aztec as the mainstream way to call the Mexican nation. Aztec versus Nahua Well, now that we get why we call the Mexica Aztecs in the first place, we shall now address another important issue concerning the use of the name Aztec, and it has to do with defining who is really an Aztec. Here we have to remember that the Mexica were speakers of the Nahuatl language, which was the lingua franca used in their dominions. In fact, until very recently, it was deemed correct to call Nahuatl Aztec, and so, to that link between the Aztec and the Nahuatl language, many people simply use Aztec as a way to call anyone who spoke Nahuatl. Being blunt, this use of the word Aztec is just wrong and problematic, as it distorts the perception people have of the Aztec nation and its history. First of all, the Nahuatl speaking people have a name of their own, Nahua or Nahuatlaca, which roughly translates as those who speak clearly or those whose tongue we can understand. So, to summarize, a Nahua is a member of any Nahuatl-speaking ethnic group. This means that the Aztecs were indeed Nahua, but not all Nahua were Aztec. Besides the Aztecs, there were other ethnic groups in Mesoamerica that also spoke Nahuatl, including the Chalca, the Colgua, the Tepanec, the Xochimilca, and other peoples who, according to their traditions, settled in what's today central Mexico after leaving their legendary homeland in Chico Mostoc, the place of the Seven Capes. Many of the Nahua peoples were eventually conquered and ruled by the Mexica, including the Chalca and the Xochimilca. Others, like the Colgua, were allies of the Mexica and were co-founders of the Triple Alliance, but others, like the Tlaxcaltec, were enemies of the rulers of Tenochtitlan and managed to escape the Aztec domination. There were also peoples like the Pipil and the Nicarao, who were also Nahua, but remained way out of reach of the Aztec conquerors, as they lived in present-day El Salvador and Nicaragua respectively. So, there were many Nahua peoples besides the Aztec, some with their own independent states and others under Mexica rule. Yet, this doesn't mean that every Nahua within the Aztec domains was a Mexica. The name Mexica was exclusively applied to those who live in the island of Mexico, the inhabitants of Tenochtitlan and Tlatelolco, and their direct kin, while all the other Nahua within the empire identified with their respective ethnic groups. This could be compared to the situation of the Welsh and the Scottish within the UK, as they are both British citizens, but they are their own ethnic groups and not part of the English people. Was there an Aztec Empire? So, now that we've clarified that the Aztec were not the only Nahuatl speakers, and that there were many other Nahua peoples, both within and outside the Aztec dominions, we now need to address another misuse of the word Aztec, this time concerning the political reality of their quote-unquote empire. First of all, Let's address the fact that the so-called Aztec Empire was really a confederation of three Nahua nations, the Mexica city-state of Tenochtitlan, the Tepanec domain of Tlacopan, and the Colgua kingdom of Texcoco. These three polities joined forces to destroy their overlord, the Tepanec kingdom of Azcapotzalco, and later went on to conquer much of Mesoamerica, all of that in less than a century. The confederation formed by Tenochtitlan and its allies was called the Triple Alliance, 
or the Escant Latoloyan in Nahuatl, which roughly translates as where they rule from three seats, remembering the union and cooperation between its three constituent members. The term empire would be first applied to this political entity in the 16th century by colonial historians, such as Hernando de Alvarado de Sosomoc, a Mexican historian who would describe the internal politics of the Escan Tlatoloyan in his work Crónica Mexicana, where he describes Tenochtitlan, Tlacopan, and Tatscuco as the three heads of the empire. So the Escan Tlatoloyan wasn't a centralized state under the authority of the Mexica king of Tenochtitlan, but a union of three Nahua states that joined forces to dominate other peoples and nations across Mesoamerica. Also, it's worth mentioning that for much of the Triple Alliance's existence, not all Aztecs live under the authority of this polity. Tlatelolco, the sister city-state of Tenochtitlan, was conquered by the Alliance until 1473, more than 40 years after the founding of the Escan Tlatoloyan. Aztec versus Mesoamerican The domains of the Escan Tlatoloyan at its peak cover a good portion of Mesoamerica, and during their conquest, the Mexica and their allies had brought under their rule a myriad of peoples and cultures which ranged from the Otomi in the north to the Mixtec in the south, from the Tapachultec in the east to the Tlapanec in the west. All of these peoples had their own distinct languages, cultures, and religions which were as different from each other and from those of the Aztec as the cultures, languages and religions of the Irish, Russians, Kabylians and Punjabis are from each other. In fact, the Aztecs were pretty much a demographic minority within the Triple Alliance. According to experts like Eduardo Matos Moctezuma and William T. Sanders, the island of Mexico had a population of approximately 300,000 people at the time of the Spanish arrival, which means that even at the lowest estimates made on the total population living in the domains of the Alliance, which were around 5 million people, the Mexica would represent only 6% of the population. Even adding the small groups of Mexica settlers sent to different points within the Alliance's domains, the proportion doesn't rise above 10%, which means that barely one in ten inhabitants of the so-called Aztec Empire would be actually Aztec. And that's only under the lowest population estimates. Under higher estimates, like the commonly presented figure of 12 million inhabitants, the proportion of Aztecs within the domains of the Triple Alliance drops to just 3%. So, based on the information presented before, it's safe to conclude that most of the population of what's commonly referred as the Aztec Empire wasn't Aztec at all, and therefore, to call the culture and legacy of these populations Aztec would be just a terrible mistake, and sadly, that's a pretty frequent error in both media and common parlance. Mixtec, Zapotec, Potomi, Tlapanec, Totonac, and many other peoples often have their creations incorrectly ascribed to the Aztec, and the same applies even to peoples that weren't under the rule of the Exant Tlatoloyan, like the Purepecha, Tlaxcaltec, Mije, and Huastec peoples. This oversimplification of the Mesoamerican cultural landscape under the general label of Aztec is still common across mass media, and that has contributed to perpetuate the misinformation on the Mesoamerican cultures, by implicitly erasing them from history and denying them the credit of their works and legacy. Aztec versus Mexican Besides the inadequate uses of the word Aztec to refer all Nahuatl-speaking peoples or even to all Mesoamericans, with the only regular exception being the Maya, there is another frequent misuse of the term that equates Aztec with Mexican. The nature of this misuse of the word Aztec has a pretty strange relationship with the terms Mexico and Mexica. As we mentioned earlier, this last name was applied to the inhabitants of the island of Mexico, where Tenochtitlan and Tlatelolco were located. When the Spaniards arrived, they called the inhabitants of the island of Mexico Mexicanos, and hence, until the 19th century, Mexicano was pretty much synonym with the Mexica. But that would change when New Spain became independent, 
and formally adopted the name Mexico as a new nation. The name was already a popular colloquial name for New Spain, based on the fact that such realm was ruled from Mexico City, which was the Spanish-built successor of Tenochtitlan. And given that the new country had adopted the Hispanicized version of Mexico as its name, the demonym for its inhabitants was now also Mexicano or Mexican in English. So given that Mexicano and Mexica used to be synonyms, Aztec was soon equated with Mexicano, despite the fact that those words were now referring to completely different subjects. This because Mexica and Aztec were still referring to the same people, the builders of Tenochtitlan and Tlatelolco, but Mexicano, and therefore Mexican, was now referring to all the inhabitants of the country of Mexico, most of which have no cultural or genealogical connection to the Aztecs. And this issue only becomes worse when we address the fact that the Aztecs are extinct and have been gone for centuries. The Mexica people disappeared during the Spanish colonial period. The main reason behind their demise were epidemics, like those of smallpox, typhus and other illnesses, as well as the decades of constant war that followed the fall of Tenochtitlan, in which the Aztec settlements out of the Valley of Mexico were wiped out and in which many Mexica left their former capital to venture along with the conquistadores into faraway lands as auxiliary troops. Those few who survived the epidemics and the wars were eventually assimilated by other indigenous peoples, including other Nahua groups, or by the new colonial populations. In either case, they would eventually learn the ways of their new societies, they would learn new languages and a new religion, and forget their increasingly meaningless Aztec ancestry. It wouldn't be until the late 19th century, when the Mexican elites tried to come up with a nationalistic rhetoric akin to the ones being proposed in Europe at the time, that the Aztecs would be brought up as forerunners of the Mexican nation, and therefore consolidating the still living practice of equating Mexican with Aztec, all in an act of incredible disregard for the history and traditions of the country and the peoples that live on it. Just like we mentioned before, with the incorrect use of Aztec as a crude substitute for Mesoamerican, to use Aztec to say Mexican implies the denial not only of the other Mesoamerican cultures that still live in present-day Mexico, but also the historical cultures that have lived and still exist within the borders of this country today. From non-Mesoamerican indigenous nations like the Raramuri, the Mayo, the Yaqui and the Tojo no Odam, to cruel populations like the Mascogos and the Chipileños. Mexico is not an ethnic monolith, yet the rhetoric craft in the 19th century in order to promote the illusion of a homogeneous nation is still alive and keeps distorting the common understanding of the ethnic, cultural and historical reality of Mexico and Mesoamerica. Hopefully, we may be able to finally overcome these misconceptions and finally start to comprehend the complexity and diversity of ancient Mesoamerica and present-day Mexico as well as the true glories, merits, and sins of the nation Moctezuma once ruled. Thank you so much for watching this video everyone, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, as well as to explore my other platforms on DeviantArt and Discord. This has been Aztlan Historian, and I'll see you next time.